because he, uh, I guess apparently he thinks Northtown is open. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we are back at it. BZTV, thanks for tuning in. Got a lot of things to talk about tonight. Uh, really cool stuff. You want to try to stay to the end of the video this time. We're going to have some giveaways. I have two chainsaws. These are the color changers. They're purple. They come off the second run of the original um, chainsaws. We got those done. Two of those, they call them color changers because they're actually purple or some of them are pink. But after they're exposed to UV lights for so long, they turn like a leathery color, kind of like the um, leather hide, I guess. And a little wizard. Everybody loves these. Catch this. So you're going to get two chainsaws and a little wizard. And this graphic is killer. <clears throat> Who did Love this it. graphic? Skeet. Skeet. Skeet actually did uh, that one. And then this is actually John Dorn. I'm glad you said that. John Dorn did these. One's silver stamp. One's gold stamp. And then Skeet Sienski did that one. Awesome. Yeah, we'll uh, do the giveaway at the end of this uh, video, or at least tell you how you can win these, so stay tuned. But we're going to talk about... so Three topics? Three kind of topics. Today I had to, unfortunately, close down a course behind my, my office and had to go put the sign up, which is kind of sad because we've... Obviously, it was open, a new course, closed it down during COVID, and then we opened it back up. That was exciting. You saw us talking about it, um, you know, taking the bags off and you know having all the water poking out. That was pretty funny. Um, but today I had to put signs up. We had to close the course, and we had a bunch of a bunch of courses close um, just in the last like three days. Was it Travis County, right, or Austin City uh, courses? There's so many of them. I'll name off uh, a, a few of them, or just the ones in uh, the Austin area. But I'm sure that uh, everybody is having courses closed and somewhere in, in, in their area. But uh, our Mainer disc golf course, Zucker. Wait, Mainer never. I mean, they closed and they stayed closed, right? Yeah, they just closed. They closed before Travis County did, or Austin. But I think Mainer actually closed at the very beginning with everybody else did, and they never reopened like everybody else no, did. No, they did. They opened. Okay. Yeah, you went and shot. Uh... I thought it was illegal, me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you were breaking the law? I'm breaking, oh, dang it, I thought I was breaking the law. <laughs> breaking the disc golf law. Yeah, so uh, Zilker Park, Mary Moore Seawright, Circle C, Roy G, Bart, and David Springs is the one that he just uh, put the sign up. Uh, that just today, some of them, because right? I mean, just today. <clears throat> yep. But I know uh, that uh, Flying Armadillo is close to the public, only members only. So if you have a friend that is a member, you could actually go to Flying Armadillo with that member, and they're only allowing four people per card. So. Uh, Find yourself a friend that's a member of Flying Armadillo and go out there and play. Uh, it's, I believe it's uh, five dollars a person that's non-member, so that's not bad. There's two awesome courses. One is a big uh, champion-style course, and then the other one is probably the coolest course that I've seen ever. Uh, putt putt, par two course. It's got so many cool little, little uh, statues and signs. So it's. Uh, <clears throat> And that course is right in between, basically between San Antonio and Austin. Is it in San Marcos? It's in San Marcos. Right on. It's a beautiful course. Go out there. They're awesome people. Flying Armadillo. They're one of the last ones open is what we're saying. So I don't know how you become a member, but somebody might get a uh, uptick in their membership out yeah. there to uh, you do have to You do have to wear a mask to go inside of the clubhouse if you're going to make any purchases there. That makes sense. Um, and then we have... Uh, the third and most important part. Putting. Putting practice? Yeah. We want to find out what you guys have done during quarantine, assuming all of you guys have been in quarantine of some sort or not been able to play disc golf. Like, a lot of people resorted to practice putting in the backyard, unless you have a really big backyard. But um, we want to know what you guys did to practice putting. And yeah, we've got some cool stuff coming up that other people are working on that they want us to talk to you about and see what you think. But it's new ideas to help you with that putting. Yeah. We'll get to that, too. <clears throat> yeah. We even have a little video we'll show you. So, um, the course is closed. That's a pretty big deal, man. Uh, they've been talking about, uh, the, you know, was it self quarantining again or keeping yourself, uh, out of the public as best as possible. Yeah. We're in Austin, Texas, and we're just about the stage five, which I guess that's the highest stage for the COVID-19 mm -hmm. and our city council had a meeting today to try to see if they 
if they think we're at a point where we need to do another lockdown, we're like a 30, 35 day lockdown. And I think so far they're letting it ride a little bit, but just encouraging people to don't get out if you don't have to, wear a mask, stay six feet apart before things get too bad. So I think if we do the right thing, then we can at least maybe stay hovering right below the. Yeah, and I'm, the last time we had that, uh, they closed some courses down. They were having uh, people still going out on the course and playing, and then they decided to put bags over the cor- over the baskets. And then uh, I think Mary Moore Seawright, they actually pulled all the baskets because people were still playing on it. Um, that course gets packed anyway. I could see how it's hard to keep those people out of there. Yeah. And uh, I, in Omaha, the police issued uh, 20 tickets for trespassing on their park. So just be careful. I would say just find another course outside of the area that you're where you're living. If it's closed, there should be a course. If not, just get on uh, practice, practice putting. I know uh, y'all can create some leagues. Uh, there's a disc golf app you can get on to... Uh, play disc golf on your phone and uh i know that uh like the disc golf rebel tc disc golf rebellion has uh their own little uh uh league that they do together uh where they do uh kind of like a video chat where they all get together in a room and, uh, and on facebook and uh maybe talk smack while they're playing their game and uh they meet up once a week doing that, so it keeps the club together that y'all were normally going out and playing disc golf together. Y'all are still like having that camaraderie, and that's pretty much a good social distancing practice. Uh, getting together, still playing games together, and it's disc golf related. <clears throat> also, um, if you have a club, y'all can create uh, some little uh, games that to help improve your putting, uh, set up a camera, do Facebook live or record yourself doing uh, putting challenges where I uh, see how many do 60, uh, 60 putts a day and see how many you make each day. And are you improving uh, type of thing? So I'm hearing day, people are doing like 250 to 500 putts a day. I don't know how many guys are on that kind of routine trying to get those nuts, certain number of putts in if that's working for you. It's a lot of putts, but are you making them? I don't know. I, I, from what I'm hearing, people are making them and getting better, but as soon as they get out of quarantine, it doesn't translate to the course or the tournaments. So, I mean, that's what we want to talk about today is, is the quarantine putting practice helping? Is there something better we can do to practice? I mean, I've been to many tournaments. Sometimes the ones I really ramp up the most for, put the most putts, most work in, I don't play as well. And sometimes I'll well, have time to play disc golf for a week, play a tournament, and I just tear it up. I think it all's up here. Yeah, it's but my, how how do we fix that? That's my game, really. You got you, you got to um, you know work on your mental game, really. That's uh, well, pro- try to practice putting the same way that you practice during a tournament, or putting during a tournament, or just keep that uh, mindset of focus when you're out playing disc golf casually. Uh, try to keep that same mental. Hey, this is this is a tournament. I'm gonna try to win it. That's why they say routine is the most important part of your putting, because it takes you out of everything else, the static things that go in our brains as far as what's happening at home, at work, <sighs> stuff around you, your card mates. But if you have that certain routine that all you're focused on is like, hey, maybe you hold two putters and you do this before you like kind of get in your stance and you count to three, you breathe out and throw it. Whatever your routine is, once you get in that routine, that's like to push everything else away so you can actually make that putt. And I think a lot of people, when they get in the backyard, including myself, I might just throw a putt, throw a putt, move move over, throw a putt. I think some of it you have to do is like, you know, practice like you think you're going to play. Pull two discs out of your bag and and make that first shot like you're making your putt for mm-hmm. your tournament. Yep. Create that environment in your head, maybe, and then try to push that out so have nothing else in your mind except for throwing. But how do you get over distractions? That's that's the question. Some people are more distracted than others. And it's funny because I, I can have a card mate make a noise. It's really not a big deal for me. I don't get distracted easy when I'm playing. But I know some people, you ruffle a wrong leaf. You don't even say something. You breathe wrong. They freak out. But I think a lot of those people are looking for excuses. 
No. They might well, be having a bad round or they think it's going to be a bad round or getting ready to set themselves up that that's the reason why I had a bad round. Yeah. Yeah, and th- those are excuses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it still I boils mean, down. No one's touching you. Yeah. I mean. Mental. It's all mental. It's got to get over that type of thing. Quit bl- blaming your environment and focus on yourself and <clears throat> you make it. You make the putts. Uh, you know, go watch uh, – these professional disc golfers, uh, they have some great uh, putting uh, videos. Uh, Scott Stokely uh, puts them out. Uh, I know uh, Paul McBeth put some uh, putting videos out. Go out there and check them out and watch them. See what they're doing. They probably have some really good tips, too. That's uh, where I uh, actually go in and watch those guys i like to watch the tournaments and see what they're they're doing is when they're set up <clears throat> i noticed that uh like uh simon lazat he'll have a he'll have a uh he just has this way of when he he's when he lines it up and he's ready to go he just he's got that release like i've never seen anybody else throw so killer you know just made like a 70 foot putt, a hundred and a hundred foot putt the other day. <clears throat> that was awesome. That was awesome. Was uh, that the tournament, the CBS tournament? No, that was uh, preserve. I the guess preserve. That was? Yeah. Okay. He was just like he was just catching up. But what was the name of the tournament that was on CBS? Was the one the majestic. Right that okay. the majestic. Right on. I'm I'm not exactly sure. You tell me. But yeah, let us know in the comments. Let us know like what kind of routine you have during quarantine and if you're getting quarantined again and you're still having to go back to your putting routines. Really want to know what's working for you. If there's certain things like do you – I know that Dave Feldberg a long time ago told me what he does is he'll look through the basket across. Like if there's, I don't know, a tree that's like 70 feet back, he'll kind of line himself up, look at the tree. So he wants to putt through the basket because how many times do we hit the basket – or hit the chain's not hard enough, or hyzer's out before it gets there, so you just don't have enough energy. And so it's not like just like trying to get to the basket. You want to get through the basket to make it. That makes sense. And that's Dave Felberg's. I mean, he'll pick a spot. Maybe it's the right side high or something. And then some people say, hey, I look at a certain chain, like three or four chains down. I'll look at that. I'll try to hit that chain. That way you have a small spot that even if you miss, you're still pretty much in the basket. And that's what uh, we're going to be talking about. Uh, in a few minutes yeah somebody's uh, kind of caught on to that took it to the next level yeah but i i see uh how i miss putting and i, I like what dave felt like when dave Felberg told you that because i see me putting and i'm the way i i putt is to eliminate myself from uh getting extra strokes so my putt is almost like it's putt to kind of ma- almost make like it like a basketball shot well it's just like i'm trying to get it there but i'm not trying to uh get it way past it because i don't want to yeah the comeback the comeback miss also which i actually had one of those uh yesterday ended up with the four when i could have had a three or a two yeah so and if you ever notice that when you do miss a putt like that, say you're putting from 20 feet out and you're like taking your time, you throw that kind of like maybe don't give it that focus you need and you either hit the chains, it goes out, or you miss the basket altogether and then you're like 30 feet out and then you're mad and then you're like just so focused and you just make the putt. So the comeback putts usually go in, it seems like, because at that point you're just like angry and you get the extra force. That's kind of like what you might need as far as like try to hit through the basket. Not get mad. Too Get mad. Throw that first putt like you're going to make that that comeback putt. Yeah, just throw it into the basket. You want to, like, dominate that basket. That's right. Yeah, so from my past, when I first started playing disc golf, uh, I threw like that. I was always trying to make it in the basket. But I was, like, I would throw it, like, 40 feet out. And then I'm, like, trying that again. And then I'm, like, throw it 20 feet past it. And then I throw it back again. And, you know, and then... <clears throat> so, like I like that's where I slowed up my putt where I didn't I wasn't like getting I was like all right I'm gonna lob it in so Mm -hmm. if I miss that's what I'm saying it's kind of like a basketball shot because you're kind of lobbing it in and if you miss then it's gonna hit short or just not have enough power to get in there exactly so and I was I kind of got I was taught that 
uh, kind of do like paint the pole type of thing. So make sure, it, and I hate when that sound because when you paint the pole, a lot of times you end up hitting the band and uh, instead of just throwing straight in the middle of the chains, mm -hmm. just throw it in. Don't be scared. Yeah, I'm more of a push putter and so I'm kind of like a baby elevator push putter. So it's kind of like yours, it kind of up in the air and comes down because I'm afraid of that big putt coming back. And I've always wanted to get that spin putt, but every time I spin putt, I just don't have the full control of the disc when I spin putt. And then you, if you miss, and it's like... Then I'm throwing it, basically, and it's like, yeah, this... You're, the, then yeah. you're throwing at it again. It's yeah. like you're... That's... Just got to have the confidence. Yeah, but I think spin putting is probably the way to go. A lot of these pros, that's how they get those 60, 70, 80 foot putts, is they really do the spin putt, because it's basically a modified throw. Yeah. And it pretty much stays in a same it doesn't really like go up or down it doesn't affect the wind doesn't affect it as much when you put that mm -hmm. spin on it because it's just momentum only not the lob when you lob it that wind catch it or push it down mm -hmm. plus when you're doing a lob you're like you're trying to like guess like how high to go and how when it's going to fall and hit hit the basket let alone there's wind out there but if you're doing a spin you know hard putt you could be shooting 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet past the bat. As long as you stay in that line, it's going in. Yeah. You just have to have that confidence of knowing you're going to hit the chains. All right. So paint a paint a uh, square on a on a pole and start throwing at the square, right? Yep. So what does that take you? So if you have a basket like this and you have – this didn't have obviously layered, layered uh, chains here, but a lot of people, a lot of the pros will even tell you, Hey, when you're practicing or when you're a tournament to get that focus in, look at a um, look at one of the chains here. Just like pick one link, look at it, and try to hit it. Whether you're doing strong side, inside, but find that one spot, then try to hit that. And see how many times you can hit that or how close it is. That's kind of how you train. But we want to introduce you to something that's kind of cool, taking to the next level to help you focus on that chain. And Pat the Page from the Disc Golf Dude uh, sent us a video uh, showing us. Uh, his new little uh, project he's working on mm -hmm. called Disc Dot. Disc Dot. I don't know if you guys are hell yet, but it is out there a little bit on social media trying to figure out, see what people think about it. But it's called Disc Dot. And uh, well, let's let uh, Pat you know, talk about it real quick. What is happening, BZTV fans? Pat LePage here with Disc Golf Dude and Team Black Zombie, showcasing to you today one of my newest revelations of disc golf, uh, that being. The disc dot. Now these little dots, uh, they are used primarily for putting routines, just for practice. You can't use them in PDGA play or during you know leagues or anything like that. Um, but this is more or less a, an at-home putting uh, technique that you install on a single chain. Um, you take that single chain putting method where you focus on that single chain and uh, you know aim at it. This essentially highlights that chain for you. And now what I'm going to show you how to do uh, this. So basically you open these up and it snaps perfectly right on the chain. I'll show you real quick. So what we're doing, we're installing it on a chain of choice. I'm going to install all three of my dots today. Now being that I'm a left-handed putter, I installed two dots just slightly to the left and then I put one dead center. Um, I'm gonna show you today using my black zombie chainsaws um, just exactly what what these dots uh, help with. Now what those are perfect for is essentially focusing on that chain, focusing on that area of the basket and owning in on it, making it more easy to uh, see that spot in a tournament or you know, in a match play of some sort. Um, but the disc dot isn't currently available for purchase, but uh, we are working on it vigorously night and day to get that product out to you. Um, we got prototypes um, in the works right now and uh, stay tuned with Disc Golf Dude and Disc Dot, and we'll be able to get those out to you as soon as possible. Thanks, BZTV fans. The infection is spreading. Man, 
man, that was awesome. That was cool. I mean, what do you guys think about that? As far as the disc dots, is that have any of y'all you guys thought about that? Put something on there, hung something you got to knock off or hit, or is that something you'd use? Put tape on your uh, on your uh, pole. That's uh, I see that a lot on courses where they have tape on the on the pole where you go. All right, that's where you aim at I've that center that. pole. And really, I don't think the proper place to hit is the pole. So that would give you a target to hit the basket itself. But I think when you know your putt and how it's going to turn in or however you're putting it, you probably want to be a little bit off the pole, a little bit higher, a little lower, whatever it might be. Hitting that pole can cause uh, some bounce outs. Yes. Good job, Pat. Appreciate that for sure. That was really cool. We'll uh, circle back to that another time. And uh, matter of fact, we're going to hopefully get a hold of some disc dots ourselves so we can actually show you guys how it works and see if it works for us yeah we'll uh throw, maybe do some uh we'll shoot some video of us practicing the absolutely and then um uh, we want <clears throat> to thank everybody for uh watching this episode of black zombie tv and we want you to uh comment in this episode um what you think about um the video for uh pat LePage, the disc golf dude uh, the disc dots and um, tell us how bad you really want this uh, the set of color change uh, the color change chainsaws and this awesome little whiz uh, put your name, comments down below put your name in there uh, put your name and email address because that's how you're going to be able to get in contact with them right i can look them up i can find them yeah if you don't want your email address just put your name in there and i'll find you but make sure you subscribe make a comment down below i'll see you As a matter of fact i can message you back through your uh youtube channel if you have a youtube channel hopefully you do if not you need to get one if you're in quarantine you might as well that's why we created this i mean i had it before but gave us more time doing the quarantine a little more time to kind of develop some youtube skills and i uh, want to do uh thank you to our uh, graphics uh, group and uh, our sound Sean Worley Sean Worley I've never heard of him that's a guy that uh, did some heavy metal riffs for us we to, know Sean yeah he's the the heavy metal riffs you hear that's that's uh, Sean Worley yeah he's great um, then we have uh, Maria Williams Maria Williams yeah uh, did the uh, intro graphic intro with the CBZ TV and the blood splatter that's her and then uh, we got Pat LePage also with the uh uh, graphics for I got the smoke and the BZ logo he does there yeah at the end of the well check it out this is it right here five four three Two, one. Ready, but I gotta.